Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Musician Mastery Podcast. How does an independent artist make it in today's music industry without a big fancy record contract or any kind of college degree? The answer? Welcome to the Musician Mastery Podcast. Alright, so I'm sitting here in the green room. Seven Dust is on right now. They're killing it. This is a nice little show at the Marathon Works. Uh, I think it's called Marathon Music Works in Nashville, Tennessee. So we're having a great time in Nashville. The crowd was absolutely killer. The sound was amazing. We've, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about a good problem that we've been having and sort of the creative solutions we've been trying to come up with so I could hopefully uh, jar some ideas for you guys. If you're out on the road and you run into something, something you know like this, like we've gone through. So we packed enough CDs on this tour, uh, pretty much basing it off what we normally sell you know we think of like how many cds would we normally sell in a tour all right so let's get somewhere around there right that sounds like a good idea doesn't it well this happened to be an above average tour and uh, don't worry if you're wondering what's he doing right now i'm going to show you what i'm doing so what happened is we packed a normal amount of cds things started going well the very first night we knew that this was going to be a very special tour um and so we started all of a sudden running out of CDs. And then sure enough, around eight shows in, they're all gone. Around 250 CDs, just gone. And uh, we were kind of like, what do we do? So here's what we did. We decided to go get a CD burner. Or it's over here. This little Apple, hard, you know, USB hard drive or whatever it is. And then we decided to just burn some copies of our single that we were selling because that's what we were selling we were selling um our newest single crutch and we ran out of those singles so we're like okay let's go just make some more and we got these multicolored cases from walmart so there's like blue and orange and purple green and red and then just some normal black ones and stuff too but we're sitting here right now first night of the burn cds and we've almost sold out of the ones that we burned so i'm right now burning some more CDs as the show is going on. Um, so that way we have more CDs to sell at the merch table. That's where we're at right now. And this is one of those things where when you're put in a position where something unexpected happens, whether it be unexpected in a good way or a bad way, you need to figure out creative solutions that though they may not be perfect solutions, they're better than the alternative doing nothing. Right, so for instance, another thing on this tour, we started selling a lot of t-shirts and a lot of tank tops specifically. It's the summer, people like tank tops, right? So what we started doing is we started like, okay, we're running out of tank tops. Let's make an order now because we know we're gonna run out of these things. We know that they're gonna sell out. So we might as well make an order so that halfway through this tour, we can stock up on tank tops. Maybe there's gonna be two or three shows where we can't sell tank tops, but that's okay because then for other nights in the tour, we will be able to sell the tank tops. And so that's the same kind of thing. And we had to plan out something where we got a whole production going, paid for that. And then once it was finished, what we decided to do was have um, one of our team members fly out, get this y'all, you know, cause you don't, you don't want to always just rely on like external forces like UPS or FedEx or whatever it happens to be. Hold on, let me get this CD going real quick. And you don't want to always rely on those type of things. You want to have absolute certainty that you're going to get what you're going to need when you need it. So what we did is we're like, okay, one of our team members packed all these shirts and tank tops inside of their suitcase, this one suitcase, and they flew out to Nashville, dropped the suitcase off. We filled up the merch and they actually took off not too long ago just to head on back home. It's one of those things where if you've got a good team around you, and we talked about that in the episode, I'll leave a link to it up here somewhere, where you can actually go and you have a team member to rely on that's gonna help you get stuff done. That's what we were thankful enough to have. But even if we weren't, we would have figured out a way to get it to us when we needed it, whether we needed to order it and send it to a venue that we were gonna be at in a week or something, we would have done it. The point is, whenever you're put in a difficult predicament, you want to make sure that you do everything you can, come up with every creative solution that you can possibly think of to get that done. Because we saw how profitable the CDs were for us. So instead of just saying, oh, we ran out of CDs, I guess we'll just try to sell other things. We noticed every single night people were asking us, do you have CDs? Do you have CDs? And we had to sit there and go, I'm sorry, we sold out. And you could tell they were disappointed and they totally would have gotten CDs. 
And uh, it's okay, I think they ended up getting like wristbands or keychains or things like that. But the point of it is, is if you all of a sudden now you take a moment, you go and you burn some CDs, put them in some interesting cases, people are like, oh, this is like a handmade CD from the band. And I had someone message me on Instagram and say that, man, I wish I would have gotten a handmade one from the band instead of the uh, mass produced one. So there's people that will even think, I mean, think about this for a second. It was so expensive to have a professional mass produced, you know, jewel case single. But these are a little cheap, you know, this probably cost us all in all like 40 bucks getting all the... The, the materials needed to burn this. Uh, the only thing that was probably maybe expensive that we didn't already have was the CD burner, which was around 35 bucks just in of it, uh, in of it itself. Can't talk right now, in of itself. But regardless, it's one of those things where it's like we were doing well enough, we're like we're gonna take the, uh, the earnings that we got from merchandise, just invest it back into the band so that we can create more merchandise so that we can make more money and you know create more merchandise. It's a nice little cycle. So whenever you guys, like I said, run into these difficult predicaments be like creative try to make sure that you can do anything possible to make it work because that's what happens out here on the road things happen that you're not expecting sometimes they're good sometimes oh my gosh we're selling more than we expected good problem to have sometimes it's like oh crap the trailer's getting messed up very bad problem to have right and so whatever the problem happens to be make sure that you can figure out a way or maybe even prepare for this is a big tip, prepare for a problem to arise and already have a solution in place. So for us, it's you know very likely on the road that something could happen where we're all of a sudden, you know, oh, the van broke down, we blew a tire or something happened. We made sure to get signed up with something like AAA so that even if we were out there and something happened, we had like a preferred card and we could get help whenever we needed it. We wouldn't just be stranded. There's been a few different shows where we were actually kind of stranded and we had to have some again another one of our team members luckily it was close drive like 45 minutes help us get the tire changed and you know all that kind of different stuff so sometimes it's better to prepare for the problem and then have a solution in place now you can't prepare for every problem you'll never be able to prepare for every single problem that you're going to arise sometimes you're just going to get sideswiped by something that you didn't expect but it doesn't have to break you, right? It doesn't have to stop you dead in your tracks. There's always a more creative way to get around a solution. I'll give you one final story about this kind of thing before I end the lesson, or end this episode, excuse me. So one time we were up in around New Jersey, which was a very fun time, by the way. Uh, our buddies in a band called Lowell Water showed us a really nice time at this New Jersey hotel that was kind of interesting. It, you know, it definitely smelled like it was from the 50s or 60s, if you know what I mean, but it uh, it was really interesting, and we had a great night, and then we woke up in the next morning, and our van wouldn't start. And we're like, uh-oh, we've got a show in New York City tonight, in Brooklyn, actually. What are we gonna do about this? So we had to go to a Ford dealership, see if they could get us in, see if they could fix us up. Luckily, when we told them we were a band, they kind of like, oh crap, we're gonna get you guys hooked up. We're gonna make sure you're all taken care of. And that was really nice of them. Shout out to the Ford dealership in Clinton, New Jersey. You guys saved the day. Um, but what they did is they're like, okay, um, it's gonna take a while. It's definitely gonna take a day to fix your van. So you would think, oh crap, you're gonna miss the show. It's gonna take a day to fix the van. You have no way to get there. So we're like, what can we rent around here so that we can take it to the show, load the gear up in there, and then by the time we come back tomorrow, the van will be ready, and then we can leave tomorrow with the van, hopefully, so that we can get to the next show. And they're like, yeah, I think we can maybe get that done. Gave us a car that we could rent and fit all the gear and merchandise in. We drove down to Brooklyn, we had a good show, and then the next morning we woke up early, got to that Ford dealership, switched the gear back into the van, and we were on our way. So you can't let these things that are inevitably gonna pop up on tour stop you in your tracks and prevent you from having a good tour. And you know, like we talk about in the Musician Master Course, it's one of those things where you have to have the proper expectations of what it's actually gonna be like to be out on the road. And if you've already prepared that, if you already have the proper framework like we talked about, if you already have that, then it's easy for you whenever you run into a problem. Not necessarily easy, but it's easier. You know, because most people would just fold all of a sudden. It's like, oh no, uh, I don't know what to do. This is something I didn't expect. And a lot of people are like, well, I guess we're done. Get, you know, and here's the thing, y'all. Sometimes maybe the situation is pretty dire and you're going to have to either miss 
one or two shows. That happens sometimes, you know, but as long as you don't let it just like completely knock you out and say, okay, we can't finish the tour. You know, you gotta figure out what's a solution. You know, we, uh, we were dealing with people on this particular tour package that were having problems and they were like, maybe we leave it here to get fixed and just have a, a rental for the entire rest of the tour. See, that's the mentality you gotta have whenever you run into these issues is like, just because this is not the perfect scenario doesn't mean that I can't figure out my way around it, okay? So I hope this little uh, group of stories has helped you, uh, you know, just have some perspective as to what it's actually like to be on the road and tour, you know, for the good and the bad, and what you can do to use your creativity to help get you out of situations or help continue really, really good situations, okay? Now, if you guys enjoyed this, I've got a free gift for you. If you go to musicianmastery.com slash podcast, I've got a nice free PDF for you guys that actually gives you some of the things that you're gonna need to know to become a professional musician. And a lot of people aren't professionals, they just kinda like to say that they are, but they don't have the necessary tools and knowledge to be professionals. And I wanna give that to you guys, so go to musicianmastery.com slash podcast, or you can click the link down there, and I'm sure you can access it that way. All right, y'all, I'm gonna take these CDs to the merch table, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you next time.